Okay, uh, I guess we're, we're, we're starting. Um, hi, my name is uh, Eric Chen. I'm the Curatorial Director for Design Miami, uh, and I want to thank all of you for joining us uh, today for this talk after the blast, Lebanese design and the road to uh, recovery. Um, this is a talk that we had actually began planning a while ago uh, in a slightly different form uh, to be timed with uh, or to, to coincide with the exhibition Haptic Narratives. Uh, which is currently uh, on view in Aspen, organized by R and Company and House of Today with Lehman Mopin Gallery, and we'll talk a little bit more about that later. Um, but obviously, uh, events took uh, a different turn uh, on August 4th. Uh, as all of you know, that's when uh, 2,750 tons of ammonium nitrate being stored in a warehouse at the Port of Beirut uh, exploded, uh, resulting in the deaths of, of, I believe, more than 200 people now, uh, more than 5,000 uh, injured, some very seriously, uh, leaving uh, 300,000 people homeless, and I think it's fair to say also leaving no person or corner of Beirut uh, unscathed, uh, in including uh, a once vibrant uh, cultural and creative uh, community. Um, so after August 4th, uh, of course, we put a pause to our plans for this talk while also realizing that the talk uh, seemed suddenly more urgent uh, than ever. So, so here we are uh, today to talk about Lebanese design in this horrific new context, but uh, also you know, the, uh, to talk about how, how, how much it was thriving beforehand and how we can get it to uh, thrive once again. And uh, to that end, we're very fortunate to have with us uh, on this panel today, uh, Carlo Massoud and uh, Karen Chakurgian, who are leading designers uh, who are joining us from uh, the outskirts of Beirut. They're both staying uh, at the homes of, of, of friends and family because of course uh, their own homes have been um, uh, mostly uh, destroyed. Uh, we're also joined by uh, by Shireen Magrabi, who's the founder of House of Today, a nonprofit uh, platform uh, that has been cultivating, nurturing, and supporting uh, design and designers in Lebanon. Uh, and she'll tell us more about that, as well as Evan Snyderman, the principal of R and Company. So uh, thank all, uh, thanks to all of you for, uh, for, for, for being here today. And uh, I thought we should just start by start with Carlo and, uh, and Karen. You know, um, Carlo and Karen, we uh, seem to be living in a time now that's defined by an accumulation of catastrophes. Um, and even by that measure, what happened in, in Beirut stands out for, for all the wrong reasons. Um, maybe uh, you guys can tell us a little bit about uh, where you were uh, on August 4th and, and, and the experience of, 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 of yourselves and in those around you, maybe beginning with, with Carlo. So, so as I see, this is my my uh, my office in Beirut. I live in Manchayel. It's a main area where you have all the designers, uh, restaurant bars. In this, it's like the neighborhood where we all live and uh, uh, gather actually. And I was during the explosion. I was on my balcony behind this small little wall. I was watching the smoke from the first explosion. And at some point around six. 6 p.m. 607 uh, the earth shook and I just lay down on the floor behind the small wall and I put my head on, the, on my hand on the, my head and everything from the building next to me next to, to mine and above my head fell down on my head and on the balcony and uh, everything blew up the windows the doors uh, the walls the ceilings uh, the furniture everything was gone so uh, yeah, this is the main door of the house. Uh, the office was completely gone. It's a small studio. Uh, yeah, this is it. Yeah, and and Carl, you were saying that you know, uh, I, I mean, how how have some of your your colleagues and 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 family been affected? I mean, you, I think you mentioned your your father's studio was also yeah. So 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 the office of my of my brother is located uh, facing the port. And uh, the other office of my dad is in, not far from it. So actually everything blew up. Uh, the first thing that I did when the explosion happened, I ran down to see the neighborhood. Uh, you only can hear screaming, people screaming, uh, ladies screaming. Everything was gray, uh, dust all over the place, uh, blood on the, on the, on the, on the streets. Uh, so I went to see some friends who are living next to me. 
like to see if there are live uh, where I saw the first person that I think that I saw is David from David and Nicola uh, running to toward his office. Well, it was it was a completely chaos in Manukhail um, this day. It was uh, it was hell. And then I went to see another friend because he was not answering the phone. I uh, I opened my leg, and then the most horrible part was during all the hospitals to 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 do some stitches, and the, all the hospitals from Beirut to the north to 200 kilometers uh, from Beirut were, were full. You couldn't do any kind of stitches that day. Yeah, I, I was reading a, 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 an account by a writer uh, who wrote about her experience in the New York Review of Books, and it's, it's and she was uh, she's actually a pediatrician, and she was just talking about, you know, how how do you help people when everyone around you is is yeah. you know, is, is bleeding it, and well, you, everywhere where you were looking at was like complete. It was like it was a nightmare. You know, it was like uh, I don't know. I don't know how to describe this. I hope that no one will ever live this. This nightmare because it was like it was like uh, people like people were dying in front of you everywhere and uh, or injured or crying or screaming it was like it was a nightmare it was uh, I have no other word to describe this it was an apocalypse actually and all the neighborhoods I'm telling you all the neighborhoods where were all located uh, is completely gone completely gone. All the uh, uh, architecture from the French mandate, the Ottoman mandate, uh, the modern architecture is all gone. So now they're trying to rebuild with private donation, but now it's, it's, it's going to take years and years to, uh, to, to get built again. Right. <clears throat> Um, uh, uh, Karen, where uh, you you are staying in the suburbs now? Uh, you said, but, but but tell us a little bit about uh, yeah about your experience. Yes, I will. Uh, uh, actually, this is my office that you can see here. Um, I was very lucky, and with my team, actually, we were all very lucky because uh, if you were in the office, you were supposed to be sitting on uh, under this wall that fell completely. And we were supposed to be there because we had a big meeting because someone was leaving and someone new was coming. So on that morning, my um, power, my generator did not work. And we have no power. We always have power cuts. So the electricity comes two hours per day and we had no generator anymore working. And I was so upset because it was not working and we had so much to do on that day. So at uh, 1 p.m. I said to the team, you know what, uh, let's all go home because it's too hot. There is no AC, there is no electricity. And we'll come back around 4 when it's done and fixed. And then at 4, they call me and they tell me, no, it's not fixed. So you, we, can't, we can't go back. So <laughs> we didn't come back. And uh, each one went home, and uh, that was my first uh, uh, savior, I will say, me and my team, because I think we would all have been collapsed under the, the, the wall that fell. And then I went home, and, and uh, my kids went to, my, uh, to their dad, actually, because we don't live together. We, we live in Jemaize, that is the other neighborhood. Uh, next to Madame Chaya, where Carlo is. And Jemaize is also opposite the port, more on the right side. And there I, you know, I, I sit home and I was talking over the phone and suddenly I could hear, I thought it was a plane actually. I went to the window, I live at the first floor in front of a garden. So I couldn't see from my, my window what, what, what was happening. And I could just suddenly feel something very weird because all the birds in the garden flew like opposite side in a very strange, like a Hitchcock movie. You know. So I felt something and then the first uh, bang went, you know, the first explosion. I jumped on the floor on the right side. I mean, I would have jumped on the left side. I would have probably been totally uh, under the, I would have been 
I don't know how do you say <laughs> collapse under the aluminium and the glasses, you know, but I jumped on the right side and actually I just, you know, felt something I have never felt in my life. You know, I've uh, grown up uh, during the civil war in Beirut, so I have lived the whole civil war and I know exactly what's a, what's an explosion and what's the sound of, a, of a, you know, of it. But that was not the same. That was something that I felt in my in my guts. You know, something I have never felt. You know, I was. I thought I was uh, very strong, and I thought I was never scared of anything. And on that day, uh, I think the first time in my life I was scared, and I started crying on on my own on the floor. Uh, I was alone at home and my kids were alone in the other home. I, I didn't know. I thought they were was their dad. And and then, you know, it stopped. I stood up. I was uh, no shoes. I was walking on the glass. I didn't look behind was what, what was behind me. Actually, behind me, the whole living room was torn apart. There was no more living room. It was totally broken. There was nothing left. But I didn't see it, so I, I ran to the to to the door, and uh, uh, the, my ex husband called me, tell me the kids are alone in the other house. So I was just like totally, I lost it. I lost it totally. I was just screaming like crazy, and um, this is where I thought I'm not, <laughs> I'm not as strong as I thought I was, and uh, you know, for me just. The, the, the lady that works with me that was full of blood and I was trying to see what was the problem and in the same time I wanted to go and see my kids and she was like she was wounded and uh, I didn't know I had to choose what to do and suddenly uh, uh, the door opens and my kids were there in front of the door so you know, I mean, sorry, I'm very emotional talking about it. It's uh, it's always so difficult to tell the story. But, you know, what we discovered all is that each one of us thought that the, the, the bomb was in his building. You know, it was so strong that each one of us thought that it's under my building, you know, and, and nothing happened next to next to it, you know. So when my kids arrived home and they live like 30 meters away from me, they thought that my home was safe. And they saw that it was totally destroyed. So also the shock was huge because the, nobody expected that. And I heard the same story all over again, that each one thought that it was in his neighborhood, in his street, under his building. And actually the sound that we will never forget, like Carlo said, I think, I, I I would wish nothing like this to anyone. I, yeah. I mean, I can never forget it. I wake up in the night thinking that, uh, like, really, we survived it. My kids stood up in the middle of rumbles and had nothing. I don't know how. And me too. Yeah. And all my yeah. friends, the same. I mean, all my friends, they all have the same stories. I'm very lucky because I have not been you know like touched like very closely and we all live next to the port the building of my father and my family is just opposite the port it was totally blasted there's nothing left nothing and my dad was there like five minutes before so every time i talk to someone i hear the same you know like story yeah. that we just that's true that's true yeah. yeah and then you know there is the sad stories the sad stories are the people, today I discovered that a guy that I know passed away. He, he was in his apartment and I didn't know. And, uh, you know, I, I was so shocked because I didn't know he passed away. And he didn't have the chance, you know, to just uh, avoid it. He, his, uh, his building was just at the, the worst point uh i think it was the worst point you know like there is this i don't know if you have seen these uh, images of the the buildings that have been completely blasted 
uh, just opposite the port and he yeah. was in one of these buildings and there's a lot of people who passed away from that yeah. area. But the entire facades just sort of uh, ripped off. Uh, Karen, is, is, is this image from your home or, or from your studio? This is my office. So my office is at the, at the Carantina area, which is also, it's like, a, 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 you know, it's half a circle. Uh, the port is in the middle and you have half a circle. And, and uh, uh, my home is from one side. Uh, Marum Khayu, where Carlo is in the, is in the middle. And my, my, my uh, office is from the other side. So it's like, uh, you know, like this. And the blast was here in the middle. So all this area was uh, totally, so this is in my, this is in my office. This is a table, uh, uh, <laughs> this is a funny picture because the other table is in, uh, in, um, in Aspen now. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> so this is the sister, the, the bigger version of it. And it's totally, uh, I mean, it's okay, this is nothing. But the wall, how it fell on the office, especially, I mean, I don't, I'm not very sad about the, the, all that because now when I hear all the stories, I'm not, I'm just thinking, you know, every time I say, okay, fantastic, I'm alive, you know, I'm just a survivor. So we won't talk about the material um, loss, you know. Yeah. Well, today um, nothing counts. Uh, sorry, today nothing counts. It's only it was only a matter of surviving. Like, are you are you okay? Are you alive? Uh, even if you have some stitches, this the small stitches does not count. You are talking about uh, much more. Of the, a lot of people who are very wounded and in comas, and and uh, they are like lost an eye or a leg or a foot or a hand. So or like their their cage exploded because of the shock or. People has been dead because of the sound. It was like this is what we're this is what we are living. It's been two weeks. We are just asking people around us if if they are okay. And and funny enough, funny enough because of the lockdown and 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 coronavirus, we are half of the people were not out that day because like they were doing a lockdown in Beirut, and everybody has left the, their offices earlier that day. So. There is few, let's say there was not a lot of uh, dead people comparing to what what about to happen if it was a normal day. Um, we are already getting uh, well wishes from some of our audience, which uh, reminds me to to tell everyone that there, that we will have time for uh, to, for questions um, afterwards. So so uh, please please keep the the comments and 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 questions. Coming now, Carlo. You were just you, you. You just mentioned the the pandemic, which we all which we all know about. Um, and Karen, you mentioned how you remember the civil war uh, in, in, in Lebanon from 1975 to 1990. You also mentioned the the, the power outages, as as some in our audience may or may not know. I mean, uh, there there was uh, you know Lebanon has been going through quite a period of of, of turmoil, even notwithstanding. Uh, the, the coronavirus uh, pandemic with, um, with, with major sort of uh, collapses in the currency and in the economy, power out, outages to say nothing of um, uh, the political uh, dimension. Um, I mean, through it all, Beirut has, has always proven to be resilient and, and, and let's hope that that remains the case. But, but, but for now, let's, let's step back a little bit um, and, and look at what, uh, what you guys were working on before this disaster, because uh, there was quite a, a thriving uh, design scene. And, and Carl, maybe you, you can start with, uh, with these pieces here. Yeah, so this is, this show, this pro these products were supposed to, are, like, were, are, uh, um, it was a collaboration between House of Today and us and our company. We were supposed to have a show in March uh, 2020 in our company in New York. And uh, this is a collaboration that I did with my sister, uh, Marilyn. Uh, there are chairs made of foam and, and concrete. And um, we were supposed to have this show in New York with Evan and Zesty. But due to, due to the lockdown and we couldn't travel. And I think that half, half of New York is empty now. So everybody left New York and the, the show didn't happen. And, and and luckily we had the house of today and Evan who organized this show in Aspen. And I think one of the, one of the chairs is at the show now. Right. 
yeah. Great. Um, and then we saw, uh, Karen, your platform in, in, in the next slide. Uh, we, we saw the platform in your studio. You mentioned uh, that there's one in Aspen, which we'll see in a bit, but, but, but tell us more about this piece and, and how it works, uh, relates to, because you, I mean, you're, you've been quite established in, in, in uh, Beirut for, for, for about 20 years now, right? Is, is, is when I think you moved back from, uh, from Milan. Maybe yes. uh, give us a little context. Uh, Yes, actually, I, I came back uh, to Beirut in uh, 2000, so 20 years exactly ago. And uh, when I arrived here, there was no design scenery at all. It was uh, something that was unknown by, uh, by the Lebanese uh, at that time. So I, I decided that I will establish my office and my studio in in Beirut and I really wanted to be part of the reconstruction. You know, it was uh, the early years still we were considered to be, I mean, I started the first reconstruction in 91 when I came back from Paris, but then I went and I changed my job. So I came back and, and did it once, one more time. And in 2000, it was for me, like the idea was to, you know, really, uh, I wanted design to become uh, known in Lebanon and I had the opportunity to stay in Milan at that time but my challenge was how you know how can I um, do something in, in Beirut and and um, make uh, the Lebanese discover something new you know and do it here try to do it here and uh, and this is where I started my office uh, and uh, invested, you know, all my energy and time to to build it, to build not only, you know, my office, but uh, the idea of having designers in Lebanon. And uh, I would say that uh, probably I'm probably part, uh, I'm not the only one, but I'm probably part of the first, uh, um, the first generation after the war because before the war there, are, there were some also some something in the in the field uh, but it was more architects at that point you know i i experimented a lot my idea was to to push uh, local craftsmen and it was very new at that time because design was not about craftsmen design was about repetition so uh, i went uh, all over lebanon looking for people who had uh, the know-how of uh, of how to to make it by hand. So I, I was uh, very at that time criticized by my uh, mentor and by my teachers uh, because they didn't want me to 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 do that. Uh, the idea of doing it by hand was not very much appreciated uh, in the Italian, uh, you know. Uh, way of seeing design. Design had to be something mechanical, uh, repetitive, you know, and machine made, uh, available to most of the people. And I was going into another direction, not because I wanted to be elitist or anything, but because I didn't have another mean. There was no, uh, no industry in Lebanon to do furniture, uh, but there was fantastic craftsmen. And this is where I started my story, you know, uh, uh, working with them and pushing them to their limits and further uh, than their limits too. I had to really push them in order to do such pieces because uh, uh, in the beginning they couldn't get it. You know, they would always tell me, no, it's not uh, doable. It's uh, uh, too expensive, too difficult, uh, technically uh, impossible. What you're drawing is not uh, reality. And, uh, you know, uh, they were not used to, to that. And finally, you know, I was able in 20 years to do, uh, to do my job as I really dreamt uh, of it. My vision was, was to do these pieces. And uh, I went into limited edition uh, because uh, they were so difficult to do that I had to limit uh, the pieces, the, the series. It was impossible to do sometimes uh, uh, I would do three pieces and then the craftsman will tell me, uh, stop, I don't want to do it one more time. It's too difficult. So uh, the whole idea of limited edition didn't come because I wanted to be um, part of uh, the galleries, you know, 
I was still believing that my prototype uh, will maybe uh, be produced by a company one day. But then suddenly I realized that, that my pieces were more like this piece, more like on the edge of art and design and that they had to be limited, they had to be signed. And it was not possible to do them in a, in a large number of, uh, uh, of quantity, like, uh, like the Italian design would have uh, you know, asked me to do. So this piece was designed, I think, uh, a while ago. Uh, I don't know, like maybe, uh, maybe 10 years ago. But then, you know, I did a lot of version of it. Uh, this was the first version, and uh, it was in, in copper, and it was in brass, uh, the first version. And then I did the, the copper, this one, uh, a year ago. Uh, and then there's this one, the lacquered, uh, uh, the lacquered one that I do in, uh, like, in very special colors. Uh, and this one is beautiful, which <laughs> I like, I love the color. And this is the smaller version, and uh, it's um, it's a piece that uh, you know that have been uh, actually um, the last piece that I did before the blast was one of these, and a client asked me to do it in stainless steel, like mirrored finish. <laughs> That's funny because also it was supposed to uh, come into the studio the day of the blast. And uh, we had also a little technical problem on it, and uh, we delayed it for one day. Otherwise, it would have been uh, probably uh, broken. So that's the story, a little bit of my. I don't know if that was uh, the question. But... Yeah, no, it's it's, it's such a <laughs> okay. good and, and, and uh, it's great context because um, we we all do know so much about how uh, designers in in Lebanon have have been have been creating these incredible collaborative um, methodologies with with the the amazing craftsmen and uh, and artisans that that you have Carlo you uh, you're a slightly more recent returning uh, to Beirut and, and, I, and I think you actually collaborated with collaborated with Karen um, early yeah. on Is this a... <laughs> I worked with Karen in 2008 after after the, after my commission from from Beirut uh, I worked I think less than a year, then I flew to Switzerland to pursue my master in Ecal in, in Lausanne. Uh, then I came back to Beirut. I think I'm the second generation of designers in Beirut after, after Karen. Uh, we are a bunch of like eight to 10 people, I think this second generation. And we were pursuing what, what they started, uh, convincing artisans, craft people to work with us, uh, developing an industry that was didn't exist by then. Uh, we, we, as she said, she clearly said, we, we cannot produce uh, big quantities in Beirut because first the artisans don't want to do it. And then um, it's very difficult to, because we are, we are our self producer. So um, it, was not, it was not easy to settle this, uh, this kind of, of uh, processing in, uh, in our studios. Um, now the yeah. the the diff I mean we're, we're, what we're seeing here is I believe uh, work that you showed a couple of years ago through House of Today, and um, you you were both sort of speaking about the the challenges of, of working in uh, in an emerging kind of uh, environment where maybe there isn't as strong an infrastructure. But uh, House of Today, I mean that, that I, I guess that's where House of Today comes in. And and, and at this point maybe we can ask uh, Shireen to tell us a little bit more about this uh, amazing in initiative and platform. Uh, thank you, Eric, uh, for hosting us and for allowing uh, Karen and Mar and Carlo to tell their story firsthand and for everyone to understand the magnitude of this devastation. And just uh, giving me the opportunity to share the work uh, that I've been doing over the years. Uh, I founded House of Today in 2012. It's a nonprofit organization with a mission to mentor, uh, promote, support, showcase and exhibit the work of Lebanese designers, whether locally or internationally. Uh, our headline events are our Biennales. So this is an image of uh, our last Biennale. Uh, our most recent one was in 2018, where we exhibited the work of 21 designers 
with a program of talks, of tours, of out of exhibit events, basically allowing the international guests to, uh, and in our local community really, to witness the, the talent of our Lebanese designers. Those exhibitions are selling exhibitions. Uh, so um, basically the proceeds uh, go towards uh, allowing us to exhibit the exhibit and participate in fairs. So we've participated in uh, Design Miami, as you're aware, and, and uh, Design Days Dubai, among others. Um, we, and, and, and we also uh, provide scholarships uh, for design students. So far we funded uh, 14 uh, scholarships to both uh, Lebanese universities but as well international universities. Um, a big part of our work really is to uh, connect uh, designers to uh, institutions and galleries across the globe. Uh, I think every designer's ultimate goal is to be represented uh, by a respectable, credible gallery. Uh, so, for example, we've connected Lebanese designers to Nilufar uh, Gallery in Milano, to Carpenter's Workshop, uh, and of course, our own company that uh, have followed our work very closely and uh, have visited Lebanon and, and, and the studios and the designers and have been tremendous support, uh, and more so recently showed genuine compassion and support to 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 our cause and to our mission. Uh, so basically, House of Today is uh, is uh, you know a connective ecosystem. You know we built a connective ecosystem to support Lebanese designers' work well beyond Lebanon. Great. And and do you want to tell us a little bit about some of these uh, projects that uh, that are on the screen? So, you did so this is yes. This is uh, our 2018 exhibition. In this picture, uh, we have a section of uh, that's in collaboration with the wallpaper uh, store, uh, whereby uh, Lebanese designers uh, produce uh, uh, smaller objects that then uh, is sold on the platform of wallpaper store. Um, and it was curated by Raif and Jad. Right. This is the one that uh, has 21 designers and uh, we had around 3000 visitors. Cool, and I think in the next slide we have uh... This was uh, this was this was our first exhibition uh, in two thousand and twelve, uh, uh, and uh, there were uh, Karen Shikerjan's uh, pieces were here. Carlo Masoud was also uh, participating in this exhibition. This was really at the start of uh, um, me discovering uh, all those amazing Lebanese talents and feeling that they didn't get the exposure that they deserved. Uh, so uh, we put up this, this exhibition and we were uh, really pleasantly surprised with the amount of interest we got. And slowly House of Today built itself and established itself into becoming, um, uh, you know, got a world recognition and, and, and allowed the designers to get uh, that recognition. Great. The, yes, this is another exhibition that we did, another Biennale. Uh, same thing, same principle. Uh, we, we, we call out for designers to send out their applications. Uh, we, we, we come up with a theme. We work very closely with designers throughout the whole process of design, but as well as production. We challenge them to, to, to go uh, beyond uh, their, their comfort zone and, and those exhibitions are, uh, the, the items are limited editions uh, and, 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 again, and again, the proceeds go uh, towards, uh, towards uh, sustaining House of Today's mission. Great, now, now Evan, how did you get, in, uh, get, get involved and get interested in, in uh, this incredible work? Um, well, so I guess, you know, we have had uh, over the years 
cross paths with several of these designers. I mean, I met Carlo in uh, Cape Town, South Africa in 2014, I believe it was. And Karen, I think we met at Design Days Dubai a year or two earlier. I met Nana Debs there, as Nana Debs there as well. And, and uh, you know, Shireen and I have been friends for a long time. And I've certainly been following what she has been doing as well as the careers of, of many of the Lebanese designers. And I'm always curious. I mean, our gallery is based on the idea of discovery and we travel, you know, all over the world looking for, for interesting uh, discoveries by smaller uh, designer circles or, or communities like in, in South Africa and uh, Korea or Brazil and other places. So I, I had been kind of really, uh, my curiosity in Lebanese design has been many years in the making. Um, and of course, I've been following very closely what House of Today and Shireen has been doing. And uh, so in uh, 2018, as she mentioned, she invited me to collaborate uh, with House of Today with uh, several of the, uh, uh, the R and Company designers who collaborated with some of the Lebanese uh, designers, Carlo and, and Mary Lynn, uh, participated with us, uh, collaborated with the Haas brothers uh, for this exhibition on an amazing table. And then as well, um, uh, Katie Stout collaborated with uh, Stephanie and Charbel of, of Sayar and Garibay on uh, a piece which we exhibited in, in this Biennale. So finally, I got the chance to travel to Beirut. Um, and I was literally blown away by the the energy and the the creative uh, you know work happening there. There's really this thriving community, and and the idea I think partly that I didn't understand until I went there was this dedication to the craft. I think that is of course something that we're very passionate about as well. This idea of taking a a design object but incorporating the making of it into the the concept, and and that there's there's bigger ideas happening beyond just the physical beauty of the object, but there's a story behind it. And, and this is very much what I found uh, when we traveled there and, and being able to visit the studios of the artists is so important um, for us. So it was really an exciting um, opportunity to be able to, to, to travel there and, and to be exposed to this, this history of, of, uh, of making, I think, you know, there's the, the, the marquetry and the, the, the very simple crafts that you find there in terms of uh, which we were able to, to see on that visit, um, traveling to the, to the tile making factory where they still uh, by hand make concrete tiles that are essentially each one an individual work of art. Um, you know, these are the kinds of things that, uh, that still exist there, this kind of thing. And I have to just, you know, I want to say that, um, you know, what House of Today has done um, for this community is so powerful um, in terms of not just supporting the, the artists that are represented here, and, and, but also the bigger uh, ecosystem, as Shireen mentioned, of the, of the craftsmen that, that produce those objects um, and the manufacturing. It's a, it's a whole little microcosm um that has been created and um and it's so important now to pres to preserve this obviously and um you know karen and, and carlo it's so great for us to have you guys here telling your stories because this is something that people you know this is an experience we can't even really imagine and uh and i think everybody wants to find a way to help you know move this forward because there was there's such vibrancy there um that now it, the, the cause seems, uh, like you said, Eric, even more important than ever. Great. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Evan. Now, uh, as, as has been mentioned already, uh, Evan, you and Shireen ha were working on a show uh, that was scheduled to open in March uh, in New York at the R and Company Gallery. And of course, that, 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 was, um, uh, that didn't happen due to the, the, the ah. pandemic. Um, but I think so, some of the pieces will be shown in Aspen, but maybe you and, and, and Shireen can sort of tell us about some of those works uh, like these, which we see here, these pieces. So, so the, yeah. the, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, <laughs> well, I, I was, this, is, this is Sayar and Garibay. Um, they are uh, a young couple uh, who I, I was fortunate to visit the studio 
uh, in Beirut when I was there. And I know from what we've heard from them, their studio was totally destroyed. And um, uh, Stephanie was, um, you know, injured, although I, I think that they're okay. And uh, thankfully, um, but this is an interesting um, body of work that I think that when I visited them, they were developing, they, they had this kind of um, material, this foam that they've been creating these, these sculptures with and uh, inc incorporating it into ceramics. This is porcelain and foam uh, combined to create small objects, but also the piece in the center there, that's actually a stool. That's, the, that's the larger than it appears uh, and the mirror on the wall. Um, and these are, are just, the, the, these are guys, I think they're just sort of finding their, uh, in a way, their voice. Um, and uh, this is a, maybe the beginning of something very, uh, very interesting. But uh, Shereen, maybe and, you can and say this, more. The, yes, so they were experimenting with foam and, and, and the stool in the center uh, was ironically, uh, inspired by a mushroom explosion, and then uh, this this occurred, and this this those pieces are now in Aspen. Uh, Stefania and Sherbel are designers that uh, we worked with uh, very closely right from the beginning. Um, after I contacted my family and everyone in the office and made sure everyone was okay, I contacted designers that I work with. And uh, for three, four hours, we were not able to reach uh, Stefania and Sherbel. Uh, that was a very uh, uh, scary moment. Luckily, four hours later, we got in touch with them and uh, uh, Stefania was uh, severely injured. She's, uh, she's recovering, luckily. Um, but um, their body of work, as you notice, is very is, is happy. It's a, it's a, it's a happy movement, and uh, and it's uh, very experimental. So uh, we invite everyone to go see those pieces in Aspen. This is the work of Khalid El Mais. He's work. He works with wicker and leather uh, and it's just like exploring different ways and a more modern and innovative way of working with wicker um, so one of the pieces that we were going to exhibit uh, in new york this is an amazing uh piece as well yeah, yeah. um Hala Matta is a ceramist and, uh, and she has um, uh, worked on uh, those plates that are also at Aspen in the moment. Um, designers that work with ceramics uh, and are, are, are struggling right now because of the electricity cutouts. Uh, so, uh, in terms of production, they're, they're, they're producing at a slower pace. I mean, for the ones that still have their studios. Um, but as you can see, it's just uh, a, a beautiful body of work. Okay, so one of the things that I think is striking is the diversity of, of, of work from these designers. Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously this is a, mm -hmm. you know, a, a curated selection of, of, of artists, mm -hmm. but but that's what I found so interesting was how each artist we looked at and that I met with was doing such unique work apart from other mm -hmm. designers. There were, there's not like a theme or a, uh, a trend mm -hmm. of some certain kind, but everyone has a very I innovative think that, that really represents making. Lebanon. Yeah, I think this, this is what's interesting about Lebanon. It's the diversity, it's the different, uh, you know, cultures, uh, the di general diversity and it's expressed in the works of the designers. So no, no two designers have uh, similar styles, uh, very expressive work, and uh, there's a great deal of diversity in this uh, exhibition that we curated. This is the work of Nada Dibis. Uh, Nada Dibis is one of the uh, established designers in Lebanon. She works uh, a very, uh, she works with artisans that work with Mother of Pearl. She's taken the, 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 
the workmanship and modernize that she she has uh, had the Japanese influence from where she grew up and she's combined uh, that influence with the the Lebanese and Syrian craft and uh, and and has a beautiful body of work. This is the work of Rania Sarabi. Uh, Rania Sarabi, artist, jeweler, and uh, this is a five meter long uh, snake, all handmade by an artisan. Um, and it takes it took uh, a very long time to produce this. As you could see, it's an immaculate uh, uh, immaculate work. Um, it's it's the, it's an edition of three and uh, this is uh, the last one uh, that uh, we are uh, looking to exhibit soon. This is, a, ahead, this is an amazing Ali. piece. Um, again, mm -hmm. this is Sayar and Garibay. Uh, the, the, it's, a, it's a bench, but the bench is made in uh, some sort of a stone, I believe. A, 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 I don't know if it's a concrete, concrete. stone or yeah, mm -hmm. uh, it's hard to tell in the photograph. And unfortunately, we didn't have time because of COVID uh, when all this work, which, which was shipped, in, you know, everybody's work from Beirut was shipped to New York. Uh, it arrived just as the pandemic was sort of happening. So um, we don't have uh, a lot of great photography. I mean, this is a beautiful shot, but you can't see the detail of of many of all of the work that we have in this show but the the stone itself has a very fine kind of uh, honed finish Surface. almost chiseled chiseled kind of texture and then the base is made in uh in uh, like a rush uh from a broom maker um this kind of material as a foot hiding the structure underneath but it's a, a really interesting again it has this kind of feeling of of a uh, culture you have this this sense of of story not you know maybe mystery you're not sure what that story is but that's what we hope to un, you know to tell this is the work of stephanie Musalim. Uh, stephanie is a uh, uh, very talented designer that works uh, with the uh, Ebenist. Uh, she she challenges the Ebenist to, to, to go beyond their capabilities and their comfort zone uh, by bending the wood and just the, 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 the precision of all her, her work and, and, and design is quite uh, interesting. In the following slide, you might see uh, the cabinet uh, that uh, she's designed as well. It's a bar. Yeah, let's maybe go go to the next slide and, and you can tell us a little bit about the, the Aspen show because these are where these images are from and, and, and then Correct. Uh, and then we can and uh, I, we'll, and then we'll open, open things up for questions. Yeah. I saw, I saw mm -hmm. someone had asked about the um, where they can see more of this work and there there is a link on our website um, R and company, r and companycom uh, about the exhibition Haptic Narrative, um, where you can see more of the, the work and maybe, um, so, so uh, as, uh, as Carlo had mentioned uh, early on, we had this planned exhibition for New York in, in uh, the spring at the gallery, which Shireen uh, and I had been working on for some time. Uh, and uh, of course, Due to the the situation in New York, we had to, we felt it was important. This is such a, an important show that we should should table it until we can revisit. And we didn't really fully know, and you know things are have been so upside down when the show could could happen. But we decided to postpone the the spring show. Um, and then in uh, in the summer. Uh, we we were contacted. Uh, Shireen contacted us about this idea of collaborating on a space together with Lehman Maupin, which is an art contemporary art gallery that we have a huge uh, respect for and and we know very well uh, about going together on a space in Aspen uh, and to to exhibit some of the the show 
the work there. So the timing, uh, in a way, was sort of good for for everyone to be able to have an opportunity because this uh, this work was was there was so much involved in the idea of uh, of, of waiting uh, didn't suit us. Uh, so we decided, you know, to to put this together with. Uh, with Lehman Maupin and send the work out to Aspen, which opened on August uh, 8th. I, and I think it will be up until after uh, we, we made it to the end of September or middle of September. Uh, you can see the show in Aspen. Mm -hmm. uh, great, and, and we should mention, uh, it also includes artworks um, provided by, or by the Lehman Maupin Gallery, is that correct? Correct. Uh, that's correct. And that's that's so important in in uh, in respect to the work as well because so much of this work is, I think, as as a lot of the work that interests us as gallerists are the works that that sort of maybe cross over uh, between fine art and design and and obviously you can look at Carlos' chair is a pure sculpture, um, yet it has this illusion of function and it can function, um, so it's this this gray area between art and design that we love. And, and putting it together with the artwork from Lehman Maupin is just, uh, it puts it in the right context for people. Um, right. we, we, we also know how starved people are at this point to see things in real time <laughs> and to be able to have an opportunity to show things where, where people can actually visit in a physical way um, because touching and feeling things uh, is something that we as humans, I think, can't, we, we can't live without for too long. <laughs> Absolutely, and I think we're all increasingly aware uh, of that if we, were, if we weren't before. Um, we're, we're sort of running out of time, but we definitely wanna um, uh, make room for some, some questions. And I think, why don't we, uh, we'll start from the most recent one and work our way back because we're talking about now uh, what we, what, well, now's a good time perhaps to talk about how we can uh, uh, support uh, Lebanese uh, design and designers. And we have a question from someone named V uh, asking if the buyers or collectors are mainly Lebanese or international, who is helping the Lebanese art world today? Because um, uh, Evan, you were speaking uh, earlier about how these works are not supporting not only you know, uh, the, the, the designers, but entire ecosystems of, of craftsmen and, 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 and artisans and others. Yeah. Um, well, as, as Shereen mentioned, you know, all of the House of Today exhibitions are, are selling exhibitions and their mission to supporting this ecosystem is through the sale of, of the work. So, I mean, obviously the easy and, and, and best way to help at this point is, is through uh, patronage of, of, of these artists. And, and that's something that we can obviously help uh, facilitate, which is we're, we're, we're doing. But if there's any other... You know, the goal is to find ways to to put these artists back in studios and rebuild the studios, which is going to be absolutely there's a, there's a long road ahead. Um, mm -hmm. and, and we are in so, so since the, yes, so since the blast, uh, Eric, uh, we've shifted our focus. House of Today has shifted its focus to 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 respond to the immediate. Uh, an urgent need uh, for the designers to get back to work, which, me which means uh, that we will be rebuilding their studios where we've asked all the designers to uh, fill out a form so that we can assess the damages of their studios and the cost implications uh, for us to do the work. Uh, we're also looking at this emergency from a different angle and, and lending a helping hand to, to artisans uh, that have lost their ateliers. Uh, simply and uh, because uh, artisans and, and designers work hand in hand, one cannot uh, function without the other. Uh, we, we, need to be, uh, 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 we need to be supportive across the board uh, where, where we want uh, uh, our designers, our students to go uh, enroll in, uh, in, uh, uh, in universities abroad, so provide uh, scholarships for them, but also enroll them in residency programs. So we're asking the, uh, in the, one, the first and, and, and most uh, 
obvious one would be uh, to look at the work uh, that is in Aspen and the works that we have on our website and, and support it that way. Otherwise, there's, you know, there's, we ask individuals, um, we're, we're, we're at the moment uh, fundraising, whether through crowdfunding or through individual donations, uh, uh, we're asking for uh, um, institutions, galleries, uh, residency programs to 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 come forward uh, and see how they can help us help the designers so they can get back to work uh, as soon as possible. Arlo and Karen, as uh, as designers, how uh, how do you see things moving forward? What I mean, what 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 would be most helpful to to you guys? Uh, in addition to what you know, what uh, uh, Shireen is, is is talking about, and all the amazing things that they're planning. Karen, vas-y. <laughs> well, uh, I think uh, personally, I mean, I'm just adjusting. Uh, I'm still thinking what to do, you know, how to adjust. And I think that uh, there is a before and an after. So I have to find a new way of, uh, you know, of working. And uh, uh, my, my personally, actually, my market was 80% Lebanon, 20% outside Lebanon. And uh, I think I will have to, I will have to, to, to uh, swap it, you know, and uh, definitely uh, I will need to look at the international market much more. And uh, like uh, now, thanks to House of Today, I have my pieces uh, and, uh, and company, you know, I have my pieces over there. I'm so happy that they're in New York and not in Beirut, <laughs> I have to say. <laughs> so um, how to do that? I don't know, because I have been very local. I have been really very, very local and uh, so now I think that we need to, to expand uh, internationally. That's... Karen, there, uh, there was a question for you earlier, for, but I think, I, I think Carlo or Shireen or... Yeah, or for me, just, just for me, as a as designer in Beirut, I always work uh, actually in a different uh, mind, mindset. Um, I don't have a workshop and I don't have a showroom. And I always asked, I uh, wanted to be a nomad. So I, I only have a desk and I always work at the workshop of the artisans, uh, no matter where it can, well, no matter where it is. So I spend a lot of, of time in the workshops, working with my hands, with the artisans. Um, and it's always mainly the pieces that I do are, are, uh, are um, like orders from clients uh, this year was, I think, was meant to be one of the, my best year. I was working on, on two, three apartments, designing fireplaces, uh, uh, dining tables, chairs, couches, uh, dining tables, and, and, and all the people with who I worked, the house are gone. They spend a million of dollars in their apartments. And unfortunately, uh, we don't know what to do anymore. And I think the best way now to, 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 for us to, to be able to proceed and to be able to, to maintain our work and survive in this situation because everybody's leaving the country and all the money are, are leaving the country is to be able to sell our product outside. Uh, I, I personally uh, started working with companies abroad, working on, I like, I want to work with galleries abroad um, I have, I, I am represented by, by Caron, who just moved as well uh, to Greece. Uh, House of Today is helping a lot, and Evan, a, a lot. Thank you for all your help and your input. Uh, this means a lot to us, especially in these difficult times. And, um, and uh, well, I think the best way to, for us to survive is to, to exhibit our work outside and to work to, for the out, outside market, not in Lebanon, because the situation now is, is catastrophic. I think yeah. this, is what, uh, this is what I think for now. Like for the next two years, we, we, we can rebuild our studios and we will do it, but, but where are we, where, how, how, can we, how can we sell all our products in Lebanon? I don't know, because people now are, have much more problem than, 
uh, buying a chair or a table, in my opinion. Yeah. That's a, and this a very is basically what and yeah, and this is basically what House of Today is 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 doing is really shifting uh, uh, our focus to 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 the international uh, scene and the global scene and finding uh, opportunities for the designers to 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 exhibit their work there. Uh, we've been approached uh, and we are approaching. Uh, different institutions, different events, different fairs, so that we are present and we continue on uh, with that purpose. I think Lebanon is a very, it's a very challenging time now. Uh, our Biennale was meant to be uh, this year, uh, so this is not going to happen. Uh, we're, we're basically taking the Biennale uh, uh, abroad. Uh, the New York exhibition would have been a perfect uh, platform uh, for for us to show so much so many designers work that was uh, unfortunately halted let's say delayed uh, until uh, until the covid uh, um, disappears yes. basically so i can say we are we are planning to 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 do the exhibition of uh, will the exhibition will continue uh, the show must go on as far as uh, as we are concerned, you know, and again, maybe it's even more more important now. So I think this is uh, inspiring everyone to find new ways to think, to make, to to exhibit. Um, I mean, these are incredible challenges for for this community. So um, it's it's really important to continue what you're doing Shireen and what Carlo and Karen and what you guys are doing and everyone else uh, so this will, this but will happen. To answer your work, uh, to answer your question Eric, uh, our, um, our collectors and our buyers are not necessarily Lebanese only uh, we because of the, our efforts to be uh, to be uh, visible and present abroad has has attracted um, international uh, collectors from all over. Yes. Yeah, and 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 I think clearly a lot of people are very interested. Um, we have a number of of questions from the uh, audience asking how to reach you guys. So maybe I'll just sort of uh, say in, in in a blanket way that that everyone should go to uh, the House of Today website, uh, houseoftoday.com, and R and Companies website evan you uh, said it earlier but it's r dash and dash company dot dot com um, right okay yes yes <laughs> um, yes uh so 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 please uh, go there for more information and, and i think maybe this is um uh this is a a, a good place uh to 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 stop because uh, uh we are unfortunately out of time and 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 we've had such great uh such such a great response and uh really uh, we have to thank all of our speakers. I mean, uh, what happened uh, in Beirut is, is, is really unspeakable and, and, and seems too horrible for words, but, but Carlo and Karen, you, you really spoke about it in such an affecting uh, and powerful way. So, so thank you for, for sharing that with us and for sharing your work. And thank you, thank Evan you. and Shireen, for sharing all the, the, the great things that you guys are doing to support uh, design in, Le in Lebanon. And uh, on behalf of Design Miami, I have to thank uh, our audience for, uh, for joining us um, today. So again, please go to houseoftoday.com and rncompany.com for more uh, information or to contact uh, either of, um, of these uh, organizations. Uh, and I think Carlo and Karen, you have your websites as well, of course. Uh, I think it's Carlo Massoud, is that right? Carlo Massoud.com. Yeah. Karen, yeah. Karen uh, chickchickurgian.com. Yes. And uh, we have to really wish all of you uh, the best of luck. And we hope uh, thank to you, see Eric. you and your thank work you, thank somewhere. You a lot, a lot. Yes. Thank yeah. you, and, Eric. And thank you. Thank you so much, Eric, for, you for uh, being here. I hope. <laughs> yes. Thanks, everyone. Take care. Okay. Right. Thank Bye. you. Thank Bye. you. Bye.